Oh, uh, Dr. Calhoun is here. I want to introduce Jed. So Jed's a professor of horticulture here at UW-Madison, co-director of Environment or Environmental Resources Center and Integrated Pest Management Programs. Jed, it's good to have you here. His research is centered on at the crossroads of productive agricultural systems and natural resource management. He's helped agricultural producers, listen to this, across America to self-assess sustainably on more than one million acres in the past year alone. So let's welcome Jed. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Thanks very much. In our short time together, I'd like to provide some agricultural context around food sustainability, describe some of the consumer values work that we recently completed, and then provide you a solution that was developed on campus to bridge those conversations between agriculture and where food comes from. Starting with agricultural context, though, it's consumers are still confused about where their food comes from and the labeling associated with it. Whether it be eco, green, sustainable, or the new one, natural, there's certainly much discussion in this area. We need look no further than the current debate in many states about GMO products. Much of the interest in this sustainability around food started in industrial manufacturing. It's a lot simpler there. We have meters for the products that Michael shared with us. Gas, water, uh, energy sources, electricity, and such. Agriculture is much more complex than that, though. Soil health is a great example. It's a point of great concern right now in conservation. However, we don't have a meter for soil health. It's very complex and variable across the country. We don't have a meter for the value of a potato grower being on a school board, but it's the rural glue in America right now. Agriculture is also very much about trade-offs. A great example would be not too far in our past with the Dust Bowl, tillage versus pesticide use. We could greatly reduce herbicide use right now by increasing tillage. Obviously, there are ramifications of doing that uh, that need to be considered. Another debate currently in that same range of trade-offs would be around genetically modified organisms. The use of that could reduce pesticide use, but we need to consider the secondary effects of that uh, in that decision-making process as it relates to food. So for the farmer, measuring sustainability has become an expectation of doing business. It has not been a value-added proposition to this point when it comes to food. In very few cases are we paying more for quantifying the sustainability around food. So let's move over to the consumer side. We recently completed some consumer values survey work on campus where we provided locally grown salad greens to the campus dining halls and then asked the consumers in their dining halls about what they valued around their uh, food choices. And like much work that's been done nationally, we found the same results here on campus. Taste, nutrition, appearance, and cost still drive consumption, statistically separable from many of the values that are around food sustainability. And this is similar to work that we've seen across the country, uh, and we're the same here on campus. When we look at those that we are able to quantify in more of a metered approach, more easily or objectively quantified, we don't see a strong commitment a a among our campus consumers and dining halls to those factors driving consumption. Part of the reason for that may be because we've confused our consumers even in an educated community like on campus. We asked uh, in some categories, not sure what this means, and we see that 13% of our consumers are unaware of the third party audited food safety programs, about 8% are unfamiliar with the logistics of a carbon footprint, and most importantly, similar to other national work, when it comes to paying for this or making it a value-added proposition, we saw that our campus consumers are not willing to pay more for those salad greens that meet their value choices, and in the long run, campus would actually lose revenue. We're interested in our food as consumers, but I think the real issue here is we're disconnected from what happens behind the farm gates. If we look at those that were involved in agriculture around 1800, 
now down to the point where about 1% are interest or involved in their food production. So where do we go from here? And this gets to our campus-based solution. We've developed, as Darren mentioned, a product that uh, looks at holistic agricultural assessments across the board with farmers at the table developing these solutions with the supply chain. My peers and I have developed this novel analytics approach to drive continuous improvement. We call it the frontiers of sustainability. And in that, we can identify agricultural leaders that are at the forefront and separate those from the laggards where maybe we can drive continuous improvement moving forward. We're attempting to deliver some return on investment knowing that farmers aren't getting paid more to participate in this. We're doing so by providing them with individual scorecards that show how they compare to their peers, but also statistically show what they could adopt that would drive their improvement the greatest. As Darren mentioned, we've piloted that approach on 1.2 million acres in about the past 12 months or so, over 20 states and Canada with 1,200 participating growers, everything from strawberries to cranberries, potatoes, and soybeans. So I'll give you an example of a more holistic approach than reading the meter and some of the information that we've captured. I'll use some examples from Wisconsin. 100% of Wisconsin strawberry farms are family owned. 2.2 generations actively involved on the farm right now. Amazingly, over 50% of strawberry farmers in Wisconsin have another off-farm job. If we look at potatoes and production in, in Wisconsin, the upper Midwest, 96% of farmers scout for field pests, 97% sample their soil. Water's certainly a concern. 57% are currently using computer-based irrigation scheduling. So when it really comes down to it in closing, I think it's about telling the agricultural story from behind the farm gate to those interested in where their food comes from, but that are no longer involved in it. It's not simply about reading a meter and reporting back on it. It's providing the value pieces that connect to what people really want to know about their consumption choices. Pretty close to six minutes, 40 seconds.